Welcome back to another video this is part 12 of what if Issei was almost killed by Rias Grimori like share and subscribe for more alright let's begin. Chapter 56, Prove Your Loyalty. Scene Underworld Grimori Estate. We are looking at a very large group of familiar faces. Sirzex along with Grafia had the attention of the room. Meanwhile Sona and her entire peerage as well as all of Rias's old peerage, minus Irina, were all present and accounted for. On top of the previous mention, Riser, Valley, Penemu, Azazel and Seraphal were also lounging in couches and chairs. As Sirzex began to speak, she looked very drained and exhausted. Thank you all for showing up here in such a short time. I know we just met recently back in Gregory but, I have some rather urgent news that I felt must be shared in person. Sirzex then moves a long strand of her red hair from her eye while taking a deep breath. Well, Rias, my sister, has escaped her prison. Everyone aside from Grafia, gasps. That's not all. Without being told any information prior, Kateria Leviathan somehow survived the ordeal during the peace conference and more so, she was being held in the same room as Rias. So, as it turns out, they are working together now. With that, we really need to find Issei as I am sure Rias's first plan of action will be to obtain him. Azazel facepalms. With that psycho bitch Kateria, who knows what Rias could end up doing. Either way, even with Ophis being there, Azazel begins to imagine multiple scenarios, multiple possibilities. He does this while attempting to single out the most logical and probable of these instances. Ophis is powerful, however I question her naivety. Yasaka is also not to be trifled with as she has many connections and her power is unquestionable. But she is very emotional. Rias, with the help of Kateria, could very easily manipulate both women if they were very careful. Kuroka, I can't really say. But what worries me is Kateria. Her ideals involve the old Mao faction, not to mention her alliances with the witches and magicians guilds, it's no lie that those guys almost had us with our pants down at the conference. No, I am not going to underestimate Rias either. Sorry Issei, sorry girls, but I've got to tell them. For everyone's sake, Sirzex notices Azazel hunched over while looking very frustrated with himself. He looks to be muttering while shaking his head and then nodding. Sirzex's eyebrow raises. Governor, is everything alright? Azazel looks back toward a worried looking Sirzex and Grafia. Blinking a few times, the fallen governor then speaks. Yeah, I am fine. I am just trying to figure out how I am going to tell you all of this without sounding like an asshole. Sirzex and Grathia both tilt their heads questioningly. Sirzex asks. Tell us what? Pulling a cigarette from its box while placing it in his lips, the angel then lights the smoke and inhales a large puff. I know where Issei is. Sirzex tightens her fists. Scene, Yasaka Castle, Kitchen. Kuno looked to be wearing an apron along with a very large chef's hat. She was brandishing a large and portable loudspeaker. Stir ladies, stir like you've never stirred before. Near the large oven, we see both Irina and Gabriel as each girl has a large bowl in each hand as they are stirring the contents rapidly with a spatula. Both girls were wearing pink aprons and nothing else. They both looked to be concentrating on the task that was in front of them while nodding at Kuno. Meanwhile we can see Yasaka, Kuroka and Great Red, all sitting at the kitchen table. Great Red had a scowl as he was chewing his toothpick. I don't see how this can be considered a test. It's just cake. I don't even like cake. I hate sweet things. Why can't they do something yummy like barbecue or something? Yasaka shook her head while glaring slightly at the dragon in human form. Great Red Chan, you will eat the cake and you will like it. Great Red stopped talking and pretended to now look interested in what the girls were doing. Yasaka then nodded while proudly smiling. Era, Era, you just need a firm hand is all. Don't worry, by the time I am finished with you, that polite and gentlemanly side of you will be the only thing that is left. Yasaka then grinned, Kuroka then lifted a brow. Sister Yasaka, are you attempting to domesticate the Great Red? Great Red then scowls, I am a free dragon, I don't need to be domesticated like some fucking animal. Yasaka grabs the paper fan that was laying on the table and proceeds to smack the back of Great Red's head. This causes his toothpick to fly out of his mouth and onto Kuroka's chest. She then jumps from the table while making a disgusted face. Eww. Dragon spit. Gross. Kuroka is now slapping at the wet toothpick that was sticking to her chest. 
Yasaka is about to laugh, however she gets over 30 different communication circle requests at once. Flash, 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 era. Seem nowhere. Issei looks to be holding Ophis as she is laying on his chest. She has a very unnatural blush to her cheeks while she looks to be sleeping. Cute snoring sounds, Issei also looks to be sleeping as well. Ophis then opens her eyes while looking up at the teen as she blinks her gray eyes a few times. Smiling, she was about to close her eyes again, that was until a black circle made of snakes appeared next to her pointed ear. Looking at the circle, the infinite dragon god proceeds to touch the circle with her index finger. Ophis, please tell me you are there and that you have Issei with you. Clearly, Yasaka's voice sounded very agitated. Ophis tilts her head as her long hair moves a bit while tickling Issei's nose as he now sneezes. Seen Kateria's hideout, yeah, yeah, I am down for working with you. But, I want something in return. A long and black-haired man with pointed ears, was now looking at both Kateria and Rias with a look of disdain. Kateria lifts her glasses from slipping on her nose and replies. Of course you want something in return, Mr. Krom Kruok. Rias takes a sip of tea from her cup as she looks to be in a delightful mood. It would be strange if you would just work for us without wanting something in return. In fact, if you didn't ask for some kind of compensation, I'm afraid I wouldn't trust you. So, with that, what do you want, evil dragon? The now known, Krom, tilts his head as he begins to grin, which shows off his razor-like canine teeth. I've always wanted to fight the red dragon emperor. Now. I already know what you are thinking. Krom then makes a girly voice, implying that he is mimicking Rias. But the Hyodo boy is going to be my one and only love and blah blah blah. He now changes his voice back to normal as both women in the room gain tick marks. Let me be clear, I want to fight the kid. I never said I wanted to kill him. Rias was about to interject however Kateria waved her hand in the air, making a gesture to let her talk. Kateria then spoke up. What would you gain from fighting the Red Dragon Emperor? Krom then grins deeper. I plan on killing the Great Red one day. If I can't even beat the Drake and that perverted little kid, then I stand no chance against the real Red. Kateria nods while smiling. So, you want to get stronger? I see. Rias. Rias thinks about it for a moment and then nods. But only if he agrees to fighting you. I won't force him. But don't let that worry you. Issei would love the chance to stretch and move around after I have him where I want him. So yes, I will let you play with my Issei, Evil Dragon. Chapter 57, The Confrontation of All Confrontations. Scene, Yasaka Castle, in the main throne area of the large home, a black circle appears. A flustered Kuroka and a worried looking Yasaka look toward Ophis's teleportation event horizon. Black and long appendages with fingers and hands, lower both the usual stoic dragon god, along with her love, Hyodo Issei. Then, Yusaka rises from her position and runs toward a confused Issei. She then wrapped both her arms and tails around the team. Era, Era, my little Issei. I have some news that you aren't going to like my sweet. Please forgive me but we have guests arriving. Issei, who has his face in Yusaka's neck, smiles warmly. It can't be that bad, Yusaka-sama. Even if it were, there would be nothing for me to forgive. I could never be upset with you. Issei then moves his face and looks at Kuroka and then Ophis. He smiles brighter. Any of you. To me, you are the closest thing to love that I have ever felt. Instantly, both Yusaka and Issei are smothered by Ophis and Kuroka. Both black-haired women had their arms wrapped tightly around one another, all with smiles and blushes on their faces. Yusaka then cradled Issei's head in both of her hands. Listen to me, no matter what happens, you are staying here. I don't care what anyone says. You are ours. Issei nodded while closing his eyes. Yusaka frowns just like the other two as well. Issei. Sirzex is in the guest hall. Opening his eyes while showing a very surprised and agitated look, Issei replies with a bit of fear in his voice. How did she find me? Then a knock 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 came from the other side of the rice paper door. Madam Yusaka. Mistress Sirzex asked me to inform you that she has been waiting patiently long enough. Yusaka nods as she looks down at Issei's frightened eyes. As I said, this is my territory and I will protect what is mine. Issei could see a beast-like determination in the Fox Queen's eyes. 
After Yasaka conveyed her declaration, both Opus and Kuroka nodded in agreement. Protect what is theirs. Getting everyone situated within the throne room, Yasaka had both Opus and Kuroka set up on seats on each of her side. Meanwhile, there would be a small Japanese-style table in front of the three. What Issei thought might not look so good was the fact that Yasaka insisted Issei sit in her lap. However after she gave him her signature, Mommy is always right, look, Issei nervously complied. Yasaka then gave the okay to one of her many guards. The larger woman who was wearing a fox mask nodded. She then opened the sliding doors. Issei took a large gulp. Yasaka, while cleverly using this small table, proceeded to use a few of her tails to wrap the bottom half of the teen as it would be concealed from the opposite side of the room. Flinching at first, Yasaka's simple actions caused Issei to be a bit more calm. Walking through the doors was firstly Sirzex alongside Grafia. Both women had their eyes trained on Issei however the teen kept his gaze toward the table below him. They were at a far enough distance so as not to notice anything out of the ordinary, aside from the boy wearing a pair of Nekomini or something to that effect. Deciding not to ask, at the moment, the devil couple now made their way toward a large and cushioned mat and sat down. Then, Azazel walked through along with Valley, Riser, Ravel and Penemu. The governor looked as though he had been through hell. Two black eyes along with a swollen and fat lip, he looked to be worse for wear. Looking up now, Issei locked eyes with Azazel as he began to scowl. Azazel simply smiled nervously while shrugging his shoulders. As the group made their way toward another set of mats, more people came through the door. Seraphal, Sona, Tsubaki, Rea, Tomo, Tsubasa and Saji all walked in while looking around. But there were two girls holding Saji's arm. Both Tiamat and Momo held one of each of the arms of the nervously smiling pawn. Momo didn't look very happy about the situation however she held onto Saji's other arm. Issei never saw this blue-haired woman before however he could feel something, something dark and malicious inside of her that didn't sit well. Lowering his head back down toward the table, Issei didn't want to look anyone in the eyes anymore. Seraphal noticed this strange action from her favorite Opai Dragon crossover co-villain. She did not like how her Issei-kun was acting. She wanted to do something to break the ice, no pun intended. Issei, I've missed you so much. Seraphal then spins around in a circle with her magical girl scepter. Afterwards she makes a saluting gesture followed up by a cute wink. Don't think you will get away without a hug from your Sarah Chan. Seraphal then held her arms out while puckering her lips, waiting for the overwhelmed and wayward teen to embrace her. Issei didn't move or make any gestures. After a few moments of inaction, Seraphal places her arms to her sides while looking as though she was about to cry. After an awkward moment or two, the large group of girls and Saji made their way to yet another set of mats and sat down. Then Akino walked through the doors along with Kiba, Kaneko, Zenobia, Rossweiss, Asia and Little Gasper. They immediately went to a set of mats and sat down without giving anyone any eye contact except that of Issei. They were disappointed as they could only see bangs over his face, but they dared not ask about the ears. Lastly, Irina and Gabriel walk through as Kuno is holding both of their hands. The three then walk past the large group of people and sit down on some cushions near the throne area toward the right of the room. After everyone sat down, Yusaka then clapped her hands once. This got everyone's attention. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my home. Would any of you care for some tea, maybe refreshments? Era, era, I would hope that you don't think I am a rude host. The Fox Queen now showed her trademark half-crescent smile while closing her eyes. Issei could feel Yusaka's fox tails increase their caressing while softly tightening. Then, the teen felt two incredibly warm arms wrap themselves around his torso as Yusaka pulled him in closer to her. This action alone caused quite a lot of interesting looks from the other females in the room, aside from the residents of the home. Sirzex then cleared her throat. Issei, Issei finally looked back at the Mao as he tried to keep himself from frowning or looking away. Yes, Mistress Sirzex Lucifer. Attempting to do everything she could to maintain her composure after Issei's cold and formal reply, Sirzex instead nods while keeping a straight face. For what my sister did to you, I want you to know something. I don't even have the words to describe my sorrow and disgust for what Rias put you through. 
I was blind as I doted on my sister far too much. I was so blinded that I couldn't see how much an evil monster she really was. But Issei, that doesn't matter anymore because I am here now. Graphia is here now, we aren't mad at you, you did nothing wrong. Why would we be upset with you? Sears X then begins to lose control of her emotions as a few tears escape her blue eyes. Issei, we love you. As the entire room breaks out in awe and confusion, Yasaka starts to feel a bit of jealousy and her tails start to tighten even more. Issei notices this and softly pets her tails under the table. Feeling this, the Fox Queen relents and relaxes herself. Still looking directly into Sirzek's eyes, Issei tilts his head a bit. He is doing his best to read this woman. The entire room gets very quiet. Meanwhile, Gasper is watching the situation play out with great interest. He then gets distracted as the sliding door behind him is slightly cracked. What looks to be a female eye is staring back at him from behind the door. Gasper is transfixed as the door slowly widens just a bit only to reveal the girl's face. Bianca, sister, why aren't you at the clinic? You're supposed to be in a coma. Slowly and quietly, Gasper makes his way toward the door without any notice as the whole room is currently focused on Sirzex and Issei. Gasper's sister smiles and nods as she slides the door open just a bit more for her little brother to fit through. Then, Gasper is now in his big sister's arms as the door slides shut very quietly. Sis, you, you're awake. Gasper is crying into his sister's chest. She looked to be about the same age as Akino and Rias. Her hair was pale white and long enough to touch the ground. She was tall and very attractive. She was also wearing a hospital's apron while carrying an IV bag on a stand with wheels. Diana then began to grin. Her features slowly melted away into a purple mist. What was left was none other than Kateria as she slowly put on her glasses while looking down. As Gasper still held onto her with all of his might, the devil softly patted his white hair. Then, as she turned her grin into a warm and blushy smile, she spoke quietly in her much deeper voice. Gasper, you're going to be my one and only. Surprised by the sudden change in her voice, Gasper then looked up and was about to scream. Now muffled in the cleavage of the Leviathan, Gasper was easily overpowered as the two now disappeared in a purple teleportation circle. Back in the throne room, the silence continued, that was until Akino spoke up. Issei, slowly turning his gaze from the frustrated Sirzex and then Graphia, the boy now met his eyes with the queen of what used to be his peerage. Akino, the black-haired woman decided to stand up as she had both of her arms at her sides. She then proceeded to bow very suddenly. With her head down, he spoke. I am so sorry, Issei. I tried, I tried to get you out of the way, but I failed. I understand that you must hate me for that. But, but, I tried. I really did, I'm sorry that I never took the time to ask you about how you were feeling for a change. I am a horrible friend and I just want you to know that I feel terrible about it. Kiba, Kaneko and Asia all stood up. They were all about to say something, that was until Kaneko noticed somebody was missing from the group. Gaspi, hey, where did he go? Kaneko was beginning to sniff the air. Kiba then snickered a bit. I am sure he just got overwhelmed and is hiding somewhere. Interestingly enough, most of the peerage agreed as the little vampire was very stage fright. As her motherly instincts told her it was better to be safe than sorry, Yusaka called for her guard's attention. You, please get your people and look for the little vampire devil called Gasper. Check the grounds thoroughly, the masked female nods and proceeds to rush out of the room. Meanwhile, Issei is noticing everyone's distressed looks, especially his old peerage members and of course, Sirzex and Graphia. Looking behind him and toward Yusaka, Issei flicks one of his fox ears as if asking for permission to do something. Noticing this, the worried-looking fox queen simply nods back with a slight smile. Ophis and Kuroka were watching their silent conversation with great interest. Issei then walked toward the middle of the room while keeping his head toward the ground. This action alone got everyone's attention on him, once again. I wish Gasper was here as I need to get this off of my chest right here and now, before, before, well, Issei now takes a hard gulp as he lifts his head. At closer glance, Sirzex and everyone else involved, noticed the teens, new features. Issei was wearing a white yukata. His usual warm and brown hair now had streaks of gold throughout. 
His eyes were also very strange. No longer the soft and cedar color, they changed into two different colors altogether. Green and gold, his face also had three large whiskers on each side that sprouted from his cheeks. Two long and golden ears were what replaced his human ones. But the most interesting feature, which was covered by Yasaka's own tails earlier, was his very own three large and furry fox tails, all with white tips. Instead of the teen's ears being perked up as well as his tails wagging or fluttering about, they were instead, low and immobile as his body posture made him look distressed. Seeing the obvious fox features, most of the room begged to ask the question. What did Yasaka do to Issei and how? Taking another gulp, Issei continued while trying not to look at anyone too long as he knew he would shy away and look back at the ground or possibly lose his mind. Rias, Rias, she did something. She, her, erm, up. Uh. Issei stopped what he was saying as his eyes began to move around the room rapidly. Kuroka could sense exactly what was going on and ran toward Issei's side while holding the gauntlet arm in both of her own arms. Then, Kuroka closed her eyes for just a moment as Issei's posture immediately improved. He could feel his soul wanting to skip again, wanting to put him in a place of endless looping. But that was stopped and things were better. Issei could only thank the ever-amazing Kuroka with a nod and a smile. Sirzek's eyes widened at the exchange in energies as she was powerful enough to recognize traces of such a thing happening. Issei, with Kuroka still holding onto his arm continued. What Rias did to me is worse than anything Rainer could have done. What the teen just said, with powerful conviction, made a great deal of the room flinch. She, she, played with me. Sirzex, Graithia, she hurt me. And I am not talking about the fucking blast either. Yeah, it burned and I can sometimes feel it in the side of my head from time to time, but that's nothing. I thought she loved me. But in the end, it was all manipulation on her part. At least Rainer told me she was going to kill me. And she did. As your sister knew full well, Sirzex. She counted on it, Sirzex. Me being killed I mean. Did she ever tell you how she got me? Don't answer the question because I will tell all of you the truth. She had her familiar give me a summoning flyer, moments before my date with the fallen angel, Rainer. I was toyed with then killed and it wasn't exactly a quick death either. So, I'm laying on the ground, covered in bleeding holes all over my body. The bitch couldn't even kill me fast, oh no, she had to make me suffer. Speaking of suffering, your sister comes to the rescue, and then I wake up in my bed. Now, here is the really fucked up part, if you ask me that is. She left me alone, for an entire day, as a devil mind you, not knowing what the hell was going on. I was fucking scared. Nobody knew what I was talking about when I asked about the girl I was on the date with, she just disappeared. I thought I was going crazy. Again, the entire day, not a word. Issei then looks at Kaneko, Kiba and then Akino. Not a word from any of you. Yusaka then runs toward her seat and stands near Issei's other side in support. Meanwhile, Sirzex, Graphia, Akino, Kaneko, Kiba and even Azazel, are all tearing up. Issei took a deep breath. Then, Donesik, after almost getting murdered a second time, then, then your ass of a sister shows up, Sirzex. Acting like some kind of privileged saint. As if I should be grateful. After that, well, you know practically the rest. The room goes completely silent minus the sounds of individuals sobbing. Sirzex was about to say something, that was until a magical orb manifested itself from a large and purple cloud of mist. All of the knights in the room proceed to go on the offensive and produce their weapons. Then the orb shows an image. It was Kateria Leviathan and Rias Grimori. Both girls were waving while smiling. There was no sound, only visual. Rias then pulled up a large sign that reads, Gaspar Vladi is in our custody. If you want him returned, you will offer up the Red Dragon Emperor, Issei Hyodo. If you don't deliver Rias's pawn, then this will continue to happen until you change your mind. After reading the sign, Rias then smirks as the screen moves to what looks like a stage. On said stage was Gaspar. He was wearing a brown tuxedo with a bow tie. He was also crying profusely. After we see Gaspar being tortured, the screen then moves to a closet that looks as if it can go on for eternity. This entire area was filled to the brim with different types of male clothes and costumes and they all seemed to be in Gaspar's little size. 
Kateria is proudly showing this closet off as if she were a game show host. Then another sign is pulled up by Rias. They are a set of coordinates and a time. It also has instructions on allowing only one person to accompany Issei for the exchange of Gasper. Then Rias blows a kiss at the screen and it goes black. Issei has both of his hands balled up in fists. Sirzex is flaring her power as is Grafia. The Grimori Peerage all have looks of sheer horror on their faces. Kaneko and Asia are crying. Chapter 58, Don't Choke on That. Scene, Yasaka Castle. As the entire throne room was in an uproar, Issei stood in his place as he started to shake. Kuroka and Yasaka noticed this while Ophis moved her eyes from Issei and toward the others in the room. Ophis looked deeply into the souls of Sirzex and Grafia as the two were continuing to flare their power in anger at the situation. Issei could feel the tightening of both Yasaka and Kuroka's grips as Ophis made her way closer toward the team. Sirzex then spoke up. The message says one person can accompany Issei. Since this is obviously a trap not to mention, this is my sister that we are talking about, it only makes sense I go along and take care of the problem in one swoop. Sirzex has a very determined look in her eyes. Issei then shakes his head. No, I can't have any of you go along. I don't know what both Kateria bitch and Rias might have in store, so, no. Issei then gets released by both Kuroka and Yusaka as the team walks slowly up to Sirzex and Grafia. He then looks up at Mao. Let your Issei handle this one on his own terms. Yusaka protests as her tails flick into the air in a frustrating manner. Issei, you cannot leave this place. Well, you can't leave me, technically. Kuroka and I have come to the conclusion that your soul, as fractured as it is, wouldn't fare so well outside of Kyoto. So you see, Issei, you cannot go. Kuroka then nods, however Ophis walks in between the two and straight up to Issei. She then lifts an arm and extends her index finger while touching the shocked teen's forehead. Issei, I can do this in your place. I can bring back your Kahai. I can destroy Rias and that other devil, Kateria. Stay here, I don't want you to suffer again. I don't like how it feels. No, you should stay here and play with Kunuo and me. Seeing a single tear dropping from the stoic face of his mate, Issei couldn't help but to pat the grown Ophis on her head. She then lowered her head while making a single sniffling sound. Something inside of Issei wouldn't let him back down, not this time. Gasper was more or less, Issei's responsibility. Sure, it was one of Rias's orders, but that didn't matter to him. Besides, Gasper was only taken because of Issei, so it made sense that he should do it without getting anyone else he loves in trouble. Issei stopped patting Ophis's head and thought about something that the Infinite Dragon did for Kateria in the past. Issei opens his mouth, say, Ophis chan lifting her head and tilting it while looking back at Issei, Ophis replied. Yes, my Issei, is there any way that maybe you could? Well, this is a lot to ask and it's actually kind of weird but, do you think that those snakes of power things could sustain me while I'm out? Kuroka smirked as Yusaka was shaking her head against the idea. Ophis thought for a moment as her head tilted the other way. Azazel seemed extremely interested in the idea as his two black eyes were locked on Ophis and Issei. Sirzex and Grafia held hands as they didn't like the idea of staying behind while the one they loved could die, just from leaving Kyoto. Akino and Kaneko looked concerned as did Seraphal, Tsubaki and Sona. Aside from Saji and his two girls, still trying to tug on the boys' arms, they didn't really seem to care what was going on. Ophis then nods, yes, my Issei, I will give you more of my strength, this time, in pure power. Issei smiles warmly, I will come back, I don't care where those two bitches are hiding, I will get back here. I'll get back here with Gasper. You have my word, Ophis. Issei then looks at Yusaka, Kuroka and little Kunuo. He then turns his attention to Sirzex and Grafia as well as the rest of the room. All of you, I'll be back. Yusaka then speaks up, Era, Issei, sweetheart, the message did say that you can have one person accompany you. Obviously, it's a ploy to make us think that Gasper would be traded back to us. With that, I don't see any problem in sending one of my guards at least. Issei was about to protest, that was until he got a good look at Yusaka's smile. It was, that, smile. The smile that meant you didn't argue. Okay. Yusaka-sama, the fox queen smiles victoriously. 
She then claps her hand once as the sliding door opens. A masked guard bows. Ahem, yes, tell me, is Bolo available? The guard replies, yes Yasaka-sama, he is currently in the dojo, shall I get him for you? Nodding, Yasaka waves her hand while dismissing the guard. She then winks toward Issei. Oh, this is wonderful, Bolo just happens to be back from a mission. I will have him keep an eye on your back. Consider it a precaution. Issei relents and nods as he looks closely at the meeting location in which he and his second would be spirited away to some unknown place. His jaw drops. Of all of the places that she could have chose, Rias chose the fucking fountain in Kuo. That bitch just rubs the salt in, over and over. Grinding his teeth, the team feels nothing but rage for the one he used to call, Master. Ophis grabs both of Issei's shoulders which grabs his attention. Issei's eyes widened at a plethora of black snakes that were manifesting from the arms of the infinite dragon god. They slowly made their way down her arms and onto Issei's shoulders. Ophis then reached in and kissed the overwhelmed team. This only lasted for a moment as the grey-eyed woman backed from the kiss as Issei's mouth was still open. Then, all six of the black snakes made their way down the gagging throat of the choking team. Yasaka and Kuroka looked very worried, that was until Issei stopped coughing as he grabbed his midsection with both of his hands. The pain was only momentary however the feeling left afterwards could be compared to something that a bliss. Standing up straight while showing a warm smile, Issei looked at Yusaka and then Kuroka while nodding. He then looked toward Sirzex and Grafia, again, he nodded. After a few glances at his ex-peerage, Seraphal, Sona and then Tsubaki, Issei stretched and cracked his neck. His three tails were outstretched as his arms were reached out while his hands were open. The quiet Gabriel and Irina sat next to a giggling Kuno, they all had different looks of excitement. Scene, Kateria's headquarters. Ah, there, there, my little Gasper Wasper. I am not doing this to be cruel to you, oh no, it's just for the purpose of getting your older brother back into this new and loving family. I promise, after we are all finished with this little thingy wingy, you and I will spend some very alone time together. At first we see a sobbing Gasper, wearing a football jersey with stylish pants, sitting on the lap of a very satisfied looking Kateria. They are sitting on what looked to be a tacky and stereotypical bad guy looking throne. It was basically a large and black chair in the shape of bones and skulls. It had two large and crimson colored cushions for both the butt and back. Kateria was wearing a strange black leather suit. This suit left little to the imagination as all of the devil's naughty parts were begging to escape their skimpy prisons. The strange part with this specific outfit were the metal rings that looked to be attached to Kateria's shoulders, her waist and then her thighs. Before we are able to take any guesses as to what those rings are for, Rias clears her throat. Ahem, Sagaspi, you need to listen to your new master. She will be very kind and loving to you, but you must behave and do what you're told. Now, be a good boy and stop crying, after all, Issei will be here any minute. Rias shows her usual warm smile. However Gasper doesn't buy it. Before he can protest, Kateria pulls the boy's frustrated face into her large and very exposed bosom. MMGGGHHHHPP. As Gasper struggles, Kateria blushes intensely. Oh my, he is so cute when he's upset. That little face, I just need to keep you right here. You can protest all you like to my two girls down there. Wahahaha. Kateria tightens her hold as she bounces up and down in her throne. All mine, all mine. Rias rolls her eyes and looks toward the quiet Krom. When you bring Issei back here, I don't want so much as a scratch on him, do you understand, evil dragon? Before the dragon could respond, a loud, ding ding ding, was being broadcasted from what looked to be a large computer from across the room. Krom then smirked. Rias began to blush. Kateria continued to spoil a struggling Gasper. Scene dimensional gap, Baka read, show yourself. Floating in the endless void that was the gap, Ophis was standing on nothing while looking on in the distance. At first there was silence, then Ophis's hair flew back just like if it were a large wind gust. Directly in front of the infinite dragon's face was the very large eye of great red, in all of his dragon glory. Watch WHO you are calling, Baka, after all siblings, shouldn't speak to one another in such disrespect. Ophis gains a small tick mark as she tilts her head. Come down here. That delinquent form you take, 
It's more agreeable. It is about my mate. We must talk about Kyoto Issei. It is important. Great red smirks is only a dragon can. Fine, relax, sister, I will be down, momentarily. Chapter 59, just about there. Scene, Kuo Park. Man, I really hate this place, bad memories. Issei was now standing at the same water fountain that brought him so much pain. Standing besides Issei was a large man. He wore a karate outfit that was black and shoulderless. Large and muscular, this Japanese man looked like something from a Bruce Lee movie. Bolo then replies, Do not fret, Kyoto sama Yusaka-sama has great faith in you as well as what you stand for. Just remember that my mistress cares for you deeply and that is enough for me to throw down my life if need be. Issei shakes his head in anger. Dude, none of this heroic crap. I know you mean well, but to be honest, if it were my way, I would be doing this shit mission alone. So do me a favor and stay back and do not do anything unless I give the word. Deciding not to argue, the large man simply nodded. Issei then looked around the fountain to find the flyer he was instructed to obtain. Sure enough, there it was, inside of a pink envelope with a heart sticker for a seal. Grinding his teeth at the gesture, Issei then rips the seal as the two are carried away in a strange and purple teleportation circle. Seen, the gates of gluttony, hell, Issei and Bolo both stood in front of a large and menacing looking iron gate. It was decorated in crazy gothic decor which showed multiple humans being eaten alive by monsters. Both Issei and Bolo looked at each other and both proceeded to make large and hard gulps as they pushed the large gate open. Once the large gate closed behind them, making a loud creaking sound, none other than Krom Kruok, in his human form, stood in front of them. He was grinning at both agitated party members. Seeing this, Bolo stood in front of Issei while going into a fighting stance. Stand aside, for I am Bolo, Mistress Yusaka's pride and, the large man was interrupted as his entire body was now engulfed in flames. Issei stood still as he watched the once Bolo, now fall onto the rocky ground, only to break up into dust. Issei was about to call for his balance breaker, that was until Krom snapped his finger. Instantly two shackles manifested on both of Issei's arms. Once this happened, Issei felt incredibly drained and was unable to transform. The teen falls to one knee while attempting to fight the overwhelming urge to sleep. However, even with all of his strength, Issei blacks out. Scene, Fortress of Hunger, Kateria's evil lair. We pan into the same large room as before. At first, we notice Kateria and Gasper, both still sitting on the large and black throne as the little vampire is on the woman's lap. He has a concerned look as he stares toward a specific spot in the room. Kateria looks to be fiddling with an old film camera. We then angle ourselves enough to see what Gasper was so concerned about. On a large and crimson-colored love seat, was Rias Ramori. She looked very content as a sleeping Issei was resting on her lap. Both of his arms still had the two shackles as before, however this time they had chains attached. As the chains were linked to a single set, Rias looked to be holding the end of said chains. She had the large strand, wrapped around her body a few times as she was holding the end with one hand, rather firmly. In this way, Issei's arms were forced around the waist of the redhead. With her free hand, she was softly caressing the very soft and golden fox ears of the teen. Rias then smiles warmly while speaking in a quiet and soft voice. Oh my little eyes, finally, I have you once again. You are home, with your master, where you should be. Rias then lowers herself and kisses the sleeping boy on his lips. This action was enough to wake the teen as his multicolored eyes began to open. Realizing whose lap he was laying in, Issei attempts to raise his body only for Rias to pull on the chain. Issei finds he is now hugging Rias very tightly as his face is now engulfed between her large breasts. Issei attempts to scream and yell but is ultimately muffled. Many dark thoughts are flooding the mind of Issei Hyodo and under normal circumstances, this would easily send him down the juggernaut path. Not even allowing himself a single moment of boobish pleasure, Issei did everything he could to mentally call for Dedre. After about 10 minutes of this, Issei finally gave up, realizing that something was holding him back. Deciding that he could only protest at this point, the teen then chose to have his body go limp while proceeding to close his eyes. 
Remembering the few times he tried to meditate in the past, Issei figured this moment would be the time he would try once again, this time with all of his might. Rias, who was overjoyed with having her favorite toy back, was relentlessly hugging the team while tightening the chain each and every time he struggled. However, to Rias's disappointment, Issei stopped moving. Relaxing her shoulders, the redhead then looked down, only to see her pawn, with his eyes closed. He had a stoic look to his face and his breathing was very shallow. This was not the response Rias was hoping for. Where was Issei's bloody nose? Where was his beat red face? Why don't I feel anything hard down there? Is he trying to resist me? Rias proceeded to shake her girls, trying to get a response, however she got nothing. Puffing her cheeks out like a spoiled princess, Rias then shouts. Issei, what is wrong? I am here now. If you want me to say I forgive you, then Issei, I forgive you. Issei's eyebrow twitches at that last statement. Opening one eye, Issei looks directly into Rias's blue eyes. As she starts to smile, Issei speaks up. I hate you, Rias Grimori. I want you to understand that. I need you to know that I despise your very existence. What you've done to me, I will never forgive you. Issei then closes that one eye while attempting to force himself to meditate. Rias surprisingly grins. All right then, that's fine. I deserve those harsh words and I will gladly accept them. Now that you've gotten that off of your chest, I think you should now pay attention to mine. Rias pulls tightly on the chain which forces Issei's head even deeper into her cleavage. Tightening her shoulders, Rias begins to laugh maniacally. As Rias continues to laugh like a villain from some James Bond movie, Kateria proceeds to take photos of the bound Issei, who looked to be at the mercy of Rias's devil Opai. Kateria then pulls little Gasper into her girls as well. See my little Gaspy, we will be one very happy family. Now, come over here and give your mommy some sugar. The scene pans out as Kateria is forcefully kissing the struggling vampire who is wiggling around on her lap. Scene, Grimoria State Underworld. So, you're all telling me that the moment I leave to get some personal time, you all lose my buddy to his evil ex-girlfriend. Yusaka now slaps the delinquent Great Red with a paper fan across the back of his head. Yusaka then speaks up rather loudly. Why would you just leave and not say anything? Do you have any idea how rude that type of behavior is? As the Great Red rubs the back of his head, he smiles nervously while replying. Oi, I told ya all, I don't do stupid cooking contests and wimpy shit like that. Besides, you guys ignored my idea, the one involving a battle to the death. Yeah, but no, instead you girls are all like, let's fucking play house. Instantly, Great Red gets another slap with the paper fan. Yusaka then folds her arms. Regardless, we need your help to find Issei. After that, I will deal with Rias myself. Great Red yawns while rubbing the back of his head. Look, I can track him with that tattoo that you ladies were so against. Problem is, there is something blocking me from getting a good lock. It must be their location. Sirzex is sitting on a large sofa along with her wife. On the rest of the furniture were everyone involved back at Yusaka Castle. Opus then spoke her mind as her blank eyes focused on Great Red. If we combine our talents, I am sure we will be able to pinpoint my mate. Great Red, you are the dragon of dreams as I am the dragon of infinity. Combined, our power is unrivaled. Opus then tilts her head while waiting for a reply. Great Red turns his flinching attention away from Yusaka and now focuses back toward Opus. Thinking for a moment, the delinquent begins to smirk. Yeah, okay, sure, I'll do it. But, you gotta call me, Onisama. Yusaka begins to steady her powerful paper fan however she halts her attack the moment Opus nods. Onisama, Onisama Baka-chan. Opus then tilts her head the other way while still maintaining her stoic look. Instantly, most of the room breaks out in giggles and all-out laughter. Azazel looks to be the only one not laughing. As the angel closes both of his swelled up and black eyes, he starts to think. If Great Red and Ophis combine their power, it will be very interesting. Two gods in their own right, using all of their strength, just to find the one they care about. Issei, you never cease to amaze me. Azazel's eyes wander off and he finds himself staring at the open cleavage of Yusaka. She notices this and prepares her paper fan while giving the angel the stink eye. Azazel-sama, 
I don't believe we've talked about you blabbering about my lover's whereabouts. No, I don't think we have. Kuroka, Irina Chan and Gabriel Chan, please take my kuno out of the room for a moment or two as, mommy, needs to have a few words with the fallen angel governor. As the girls take a giggling kuno out of the large meeting room, Yusaka slowly approaches a nervous and terrified looking Azazel as he cowers in fear. As the sounds of hitting continue, we can see most of the room's inhabitants, wincing in empathy. Seen, the gates of gluttony, hell. So, when do I get to fight your toy? Krom has his arms folded as he blankly looks toward Rias and a bound Issei. Meanwhile, Rias slowly looks up and away from the squished face of Issei and toward the grumpy-looking evil dragon in human form. As her smile turns into a frown, Rias speaks up. I haven't decided yet, after all, we have all the time in the world now, don't we, Issei darling? Issei, who is still forcefully wrapped around the Switch Princess, attempts to speak however his face is muffled by Rias's very large and halfway exposed breasts. Rias then nods as she tightens her shoulders again, completely silencing Issei. See, he agrees with me. We have all the time in the world, Krom. So, I suggest finding something else to do as I dote on my special pawn. Eat. Don't. Stop. Gasper is also in a similar situation as Issei. The little vampire looks to be bound in purple ropes. These ropes are latched to large metal rings that happen to be attached to Kateria's bondage outfit. Like Issei, Gasper is wrapped around the Leviathan Devil as his head is also between two very large and practically exposed breasts. Kateria then tightens her own ropes which silences poor Gasper. Ah, you said, don't stop, well my precious, don't worry, I won't. Krom now rolls his eyes as he begins to make his way out of the main room. Yo, Kyoto boy, when you get tired of being Rius's plaything and need to take some steam off, let me know, until then, good luck, kid. Ha 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 ha. Chapter 60, Double Feature. Part 1 of TWO. Scene, Hell. Level of Gluttony, Fortress of Hunger. Issei, you seem to have calmed down quite a bit. I think you should be rewarded, don't you? Rius was looking down at a muffled Issei as the devil's breasts relentlessly hugged the boy's cheeks. Issei, unable to move or do anything aside from forcefully hug the redhead, continued to keep his eyes forced shut. He continued to think of things such as training and boring school homework. These thoughts ended when he felt his face being released from the flesh bags of the Switch Princess. Then, something both soft and hard was forced into his mouth as he was forced into a new position. Opening his eyes, Issei found himself, suckling the evil tit of Rias herself. Unable to spit the nipple out as his face was literally pressed against Rias's breast, Issei was only able to struggle a bit as his chains tightened. Rias is blushing profoundly, Oh, Issei, I knew I would get a rise out of you. Yes, that's right, you enjoy your master's bountiful boobs like a good boy. Rias now plays with Issei's ears while we look toward Gasper and Kateria. Kateria looked to be staring at a hand mirror while placing lipstick on her mouth. The mirror was floating in place as the devil used one hand to draw on her lips while the other had the handle end of the purple ropes that held Gasper in place. All we were able to hear was mumbling sounds coming from Kateria's chest as the vampire boy's face was forced in her cleavage. Say, Gaspy, does this shade look good on your beautiful and loving master? Kateria now puckers up while relaxing her shoulders. A frustrated and out of breath Gasper looks up at Kateria's face. Shaking his head no, the little vampire replies. No, I most certainly do not think anything would look good on something as evil as you. Kateria looks down and smirks. I see. Well then. Grinning now, Kateria yanks on her rope as Gasper is forced back into his boob prison. How about you and my evil girls talk things over for a bit? Issei can hear this happening and is attempting to protest about what Kateria is doing to his kahai, however Rias's nipple works just like a gag, therefore all the team could do was mumble and drool a bit. This made Rias lustfully smile. That smile was only momentary as sounds were heard. Crack crunch k-a-b-a-a-a-a-n-n-n-n-g-g-g. Issei was released from Rias as a large gust of wind took over the entire room. After the wind died down, black dust enveloped the entire room, however a draft remained. Once the dust cleared, what used to be a large room now had its entire half, completely exposed to the outside as it was destroyed in some kind of blast or collision. 
As Issei got from the floor, he noticed Rias also getting up. She still had hold of his chains and once she realized this, she tugged relentlessly which pulled the teen back onto his knees where he lay next to Rias's legs. She then uses her free hand to pull Issei's head into her thigh. Looking onward, Rias notices the drop to the ground as this room was actually inside of a large tower. Rubbing Issei's ears, Rias looks behind her only to see Kateria, still on her throne, with Gasper in her lap. She then scanned the room, only to flinch suddenly. Looking back at her was a gigantic and golden eyeball. After a moment, Rias came to the conclusion that this was none other than Great Red, the same one from when Issei went Juggernaut. At further glance, the insanely large dragon had a large group of individuals on his back. Compared to the dragon itself, the people looked to be nothing more than fleas as they jumped off and onto the different levels of the large and broken fortress. Rias looked back at Krom. The evil dragon had his jaw agape as his knees were quite literally shaking. It, it's him. Holy shit, it's him. Krom then turned his crimson gaze toward a kneeling Issei and thought deeply. There is no way these chicks are gonna stand a chance against the almighty great Red Sama. This may be my only chance to fight the brat. At least if I am able to beat him then I know, I know I will be able to take down Red in time. Krom looked again at the frustrated Rias, then back down at a struggling Issei. Then, Krom's worried face turned into an evil grin. Well, it's not like I am going back on my word or nothing. She obviously can't hold up her end of the bargain since it feels like Great Red. Also brought a Mao or two to the fight. Oh well, too bad, princess. Guess you ain't getting any of that Red Dragon Emperor D, W A H A H A H A. Seeing the evil dragon grinning back at her, Rias was wondering what this guy was up to. That was until she felt slack at the end of the chain she was holding. At the same time, she also felt Issei pushing away from her. Surprised and shocked, Rias looked down, only to see Issei in a crouched position. He was about five or six feet away from her as he had both of his arms held out. Firstly, his shackles were no longer on his arms as they now lay, broken, on the dusty black marble floor. Secondly, Issei's face was obscured by his long brown hair with golden streaks. This caused a menacing look as only a pair of glowing eyes could be seen through his large bangs. Green and gold, both staring directly into the soul of a scared Rias. This made Krom's smirk grow even more as his sharp teeth were beginning to show. Rias jumped as both of Issei's hands were now extended, showing off long and black claws on each fingertip. Issei's ears were flat back as his three tails were beginning to glow an intense and crimson color. Seeing only red, Issei spoke in a very rough and growlish kind of voice. Ray Rias, will you die for me? The demon fox team then charged the terrified Switch Princess while fully intending to sink both of his claws into her black and dead heart. Issei, my precious husband, there you are, cute little kitten maker. I came to take you from this vile place, my mate. Issei stopped in his tracks at the three voices. Rias was pushed against a wall as Issei's claws were only inches from her chest. Looking back toward the broken part of the room, Issei's eyes widened as his bangs flew back from a small gust of wind. The smells of plums, cherry blossoms and cinnamon were accompanied along with this draft. Issei comes out from his small moment of insanity and takes a few steps back. He is looking at his hands while studying the long claws. Turning his attention back onto a petrified Rias, Issei notices that she seems to be scowling at the man known as Krom. Rias then speaks up with a hint of fear in her voice. You released his bindings, didn't you? Answer me, traitor. Krom begins to laugh, this gains Issei's attention. Krom looks directly at the fox team. Yeah, kid, I freed your ass. So, how about thanking me with a fight? I don't care who's on what side or blah blah blah, I just wanna fight someone strong. So, how about it? Issei was about to say something, that was until he was tackled by Yasaka, Kuroka and Ophis. As Rias was scowling and Krom was tilting his head, the team was not being embraced by Yakasa and Kuroka as Ophis, in her child form, was hugging Issei's stomach. Immediately Yasaka turned her attention to Rias. While continuing to hold on to Issei's arm, Yasaka was about to speak her mind. Grimori, Rias, sister of the Great Mao Mistress Sirzex, I will begin your very intense punishment. Prepare yourself, bitch. Faster than any I could keep up with, 
Isaka now vanished from Issei's side in a flash. Then, the sounds of Rias grunting in pain filled the room. Over and over, Yusaka continued to bitch slap Rias across her face at supersonic speeds. Rias on the other hand was trying to gain some distance as she wanted to use her destruction magic on the fox. This was useless as the ancient Yukai was much more experienced with multiple forms of offensive and defensive martial arts. Being a nine-tailed fox, she also combines her spiritual powers which increases her physical abilities to near god-like proportions. One might compare this ability with that of Tuki, however Yusaka's abilities are strictly unique to her species. As this one-sided smackdown continued, Issei could hear the sounds of demonic monsters and whatever else lived in this castle, being killed. Taking a moment to feel the different energies around him, Issei found this to be much easier all of the sudden. Heck, it was no different than breathing. Sirzex, Graphia, Seraphal, Sona, Akino, Iaina, Kaneko and all of the others. Wow, they all came, they really came to help me. Wait, why do I feel like, Uug, Issei began to grab at his stomach with both of his hands. Intense pain that could only be described as burning, forced the team back onto one knee as he began to scream. Agha, this gained the attention of Kuroka as she was able to visualize what was happening with her lover. Ophis stood where she was while tilting her head. Yasaka was busy with Rias's beatdown however she could feel the change in power within the soul of her husband. Throwing Rias into a broken pillar, the Fox Queen then turned her attention to the screaming Issei. Krom had a puzzled look as he had no idea what was happening. Crimson and sky blue colored fire was now radiating off of the teen's shoulders and while his tails began to dance in a strange and golden blur. Then, silence, as his bangs once again covered his face, his eyes began to glow once again. Instantly, a sudden burst of power seemed to implode all around the fox team. Flash. After the explosive and implosive blast, Issei was now standing tall once again. Dancing behind the back of Issei Hyodo, there were now a staggering amount of tails, fluttering behind him, all caught on fire. Nine tails could be counted, all with red and blue flames, cindering without any smoke. Green and gold glows were the only thing that could be seen under Issei's bangs. Krom now points toward the team. Alright, great show, now, let's fucking fight, fox boy. Deep down, the evil dragon was extremely excited. Smiling with a toothy grin, Krom speaks up once more. Also, if you think that your little Yukai shit is gonna be enough to stop me, think again, wimp. Go all out, use your balance breaker or else, I may end up getting bored. If I get bored, Krom then looks toward Yusaka and nods. Then maybe I can get that fine piece of ass over there to entertain me. Look at those tits. As Krom is staring at a scowling Yusaka's chest, Issei completely disappears from his location. At first, Krom didn't notice anything, that was until Yusaka's scowl turned into an anticipating grin. Finally getting a clue, the evil dragon looked back in Issei's direction only to see nothing. Before he had a chance to look around, Krom felt intense pain to the side of his right cheek. Kachow, clank, pound, phffft. We now see Issei, who is on top of a floored Krom as the fox teen relentlessly punches the evil dragon in his cowering humanoid face. The man in black looked to be flailing his arms pointlessly, trying to block the insane barrage of fists going for his now beaten face. Issei was not holding back however he was also not in his balance breaker form either. This was insulting. How? C-L-O-K-K-E-F-F-F-T. Issei now noticed Krom beginning to smirk as he stopped his attempt at blocking. Then, blast, asterisk, Issei was thrown from Krom at unbelievable speeds, only to be caught by his mate, Ophis. Realizing that the infinite dragon god was in her child form, this made things much more awkward as she was holding the flustered and battle-hungry teen, bridal style. Blushing for a moment, Issei's attention was taken away from his stoic beauty and now back toward Krom. His body was releasing a very powerful gold and black aura that felt very threatening. Even Ophis's blank eyes widened ever so slightly. Knowing full well that her mate wasn't going to back down at this point, Ophis simply reached her lips toward Issei's ear. Yasaka is here now, which means you are feeling better. This is agreeable, you no longer need my snakes of power solely to keep you alive, thus, use them for their intended purpose. 
Understanding what Ophis meant by all of this, Issei nods. She's right. That pain came the moment Yasaka showed up with everyone. Those were the snake things. Okay. Partner, are you with me? The drag replied in Issei subconscious. Obviously. Internally forming a tick mark, Issei continued his question. Can you control Ophis's snakes when I go all out balance breaker on this crom crotch asshat? Along with regulating your new Yukai Nine Tail powers, for the first time mind you, well, I guess it should be fine, maybe. Internally facepalming, Issei relays his orders. Okay, Dedre, do it. Jumping from little Ophis's powerful arms, Issei winked back at her as he started to rush toward the grinning evil dragon. Fuck you, Krom, balance breaker. Dedre repeated the order, however it sounded different this time. Balance breaker evolution kitsune. Reinitializing boosted gear, unknown element, override, compensating, boost x50, boost x50, armor refit, complete in 3, 2, 1. Fox fire scale male, the no longer smirking Krom had one hand over his eyes as the red and blue flash was incredibly overwhelming. Flash, slowly moving his hand down past his pale face, the evil dragon started to slowly grin. Once again, we are treated to his sharp and toothy grin as his eyes begin to pulse with anticipation. Ah yes I hope you my precious viewers enjoy for this is the final part for now at least I think so here's a last word from the author of this fanfiction. So, firstly, I lied. This will be the second to last episode of this fiction. So, technically, I am finishing this at chapter 60, but, like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, well, gonna do the same thing. So, look forward to chapter 60 part 2. Also, I had lots of help from Overlord Sturm and my Discord collabs, thanks guys. Alright, lastly, so a few of my buddies on said Discord, want a possible sequel to Betrayal of a Lifetime. Do you, let me know in the reviews. Also, Discord, VYGDGCEF well folks, catch you on the flip side. Alright now goodbye everyone I wonder what fanfiction of DXD Tall would enjoy next laughing face.